Um, so a quick overview on myself. I grew up in a typical Indian household. Uh, my father, who was in business, I saw him go through really hard times. Swore to myself, I will never be an entrepreneur because it sees such highs and lows. I wanted a regular paycheck. That's the only thing I wanted in my life. Turns out never say never because you end up doing that. Uh, <laughs> exactly what you say you're never gonna do. Um, I went to the US to study and I happened to work with the Clinton administration helping women entrepreneurs raise funding. And I saw these phenomenal, phenomenal women entrepreneurs who had no support backing, very much unlike India, where no matter what happens, we always have our parents and our family. These people had no one, and they still were doing such a phenomenal job. Raise, uh, they were raising a family and actually going out there trying to raise money, which is what we were helping them do, sorry. And so um, I guess that's where I decided I need to do this. I need to do this as well. So my, um, I, I think for women entrepreneurs or women professionals in general, um, one thing that I've seen is very important that is very much so lacking, at least in the Indian environment space, um, is a network or having mentors. Uh, there is a statistic that says that if men and women were put, um, were given the same opportunity uh, they would perform equally well or women would perform better. However, women attribute their success to mentors. Um, they attribute about 70% of the success to mentors or uh, people that they look up to. So it's really important. Um, one of the things that we don't have a lot of in India is definitely that great networks or, um, you know, men. I guess a lot of women entrepreneurs or a lot of women professionals. And I think that's why we're here, we're talking about this, we're trying to break this. Uh, so, um, my dollar is my second company. I then moved back, I worked in the US. I started my first company. Um, so, so much for not being an entrepreneur because <laughs> my dollar is my second company. I started that in 2009. Um, and I was one of the only two women entrepreneurs in the dot com space. Um, which was fine, I guess, um, but it didn't help that I was trying to raise money when I was very pregnant. I was eight months pregnant and I'd go out and try and raise. Let me tell you, that was the first the VCs had seen of that, okay? No VC in India had actually seen that. So um, I think it was a real shock uh, for them in terms of, uh, you know, just a woman being out there and doing that. Um, it was odd too because I didn't, you know, that was the time you really needed a network and that wasn't there. That being said, things in India have really changed. We're talking about 2009. Now, in 2016, um, I just um, I was presenting in Bangalore for um, a phenomenal woman who's uh, one of the largest power investors. And she's just started a, a program and she invited women entrepreneurs for a conference, a day conference. It was oversubscribed. They had to max it out at 300 because that's, that was the space. That is the amount of people or women entrepreneurs and aspiring women entrepreneurs. It's phenomenal to see the kind of stuff. Now, I know when you're sitting outside of India, the kind of stuff that people get to hear, and this is because I happen to travel globally, is you hear a lot about, um, you know, uh, females and uh, the way we, they've been treated. The Nirbhaya case, which is the rape case, I know that got highlighted a lot by the media. Yes, that is there. Let's face the facts. We need to own up to this. Uh, India is not the safest country, all right? Uh, Delhi is definitely not the safest city. The statistics are appalling. That being said, what is weird or almost odd that has started happening is there's almost like a revolution that has started. You can actually see um, almost since 2012, more and more women that have started working, which is brilliant because if you see the statistics on um, the, you know, the amount of drop-ups that we have in terms of women entrepreneurs leaving the workforce or women professionals, it is really ridiculous. We are the largest in terms of Asia, in terms of women leaving the workforce after they get married and definitely after they have kids, uh, I think there's another 50% drop off rate. So uh, India is sadly one of the countries where um, I guess women don't focus that much on a career. And I think that's completely changing. It started changing not in big statistics in 2012. However, that's already um, 
I don't even think they have a great statistic on women entrepreneurs in 2009. That's already up to 10%, which uh, compared to the US average is not that bad. Um, are there things that we need to change? Absolutely. Um, I, do I think that there are, are there a lot of people who are making a conscious effort to do that in India? Absolutely, we see more and more women entrepreneurs coming out. We see more women professionals uh, that are talking about it. Um, I spoke at Startup India, which was a Modi initiative. And what was interesting was it was a day-long conference. And the first panel that happened to uh, be planned was actually around women entrepreneurship. So you can understand that um, the amount of focus that is being put in general, uh, not just by you know, uh, women uh, all across India, but also by the government now. Uh, the government has also earmarked funds uh, that are just for women entrepreneurs. So there's about 500 crores that has been set aside for SCST as well as women entrepreneurs. Um, so it's interesting to see that happening and the government getting involved as well, which is a first of its kind. We've never had that happen. Uh, some things I think that we can learn in general from globally, uh, which is not there in India, which I think the dot-coms are helping uh, bring about, or the newer companies are helping bring about, is, um, so I raised money when I was, I mean, I tried raising money when I was pregnant. Um, and um, I see a lot of women leaving in general uh, once they start a family or once, you know, they're on that route. I think India, we seriously lack in terms of sensitivity to that. And we see a lot of women leaving because there are not great policies around that. Um, uh, definitely not if you compare it to Sweden. I mean, there's an 18 month, uh, you know, maternity policy. In India, it's three months. That is it. Uh, there was no thing as paternity policy. It was interesting, I had uh, a journalist interview me and they said, what about your maternity policy? And I said, you know, um, ours we wing it, we played by year. And she said, what does that mean? I said, you know, it's three months, but if people need more time, they can work from home, we just wing it. And she said, really? I said, you didn't ask me about the paternity policy. She's like, what is that? <laughs> and I said, the, you know, why should it be only the mother's uh, responsibility. The father needs time off as well. So we have the same. It's three months or we wing it. And she was like, all right, interesting. So there are things that uh, the, dot, the new companies are definitely doing. Uh, a lot of the dot coms are making it six months now, the maternity policy. Um, at Maidala, we started a new initiative, which is completely different and random. And I think it's also kind of self-serving. We do um, an all women's happy hour. Uh, I've noticed the women on my team never used to talk. They were more hesitant. And so to get them out, we do a happy hour. And it's just an all women's happy hour. And you just see, get a couple of drinks in someone, and you can really get them talking. So <laughs> we essentially uh, started that as an initiative. And it's, it's done phenomenally well, to the point where we have now a lot of um, women from other companies, a lot of female journalists was like, when you have it over the next time, can you just invite us over? So um, we're, we're trying to change this completely in terms of flexibility around women. Um, the gender split on my team is about 50-50. Sadly for tech, it is not that. Uh, the main um, percentage is still 80% male and 20% female. Um, that's the only team that is uh, not at an even split. We're trying to get that happen, to happen and we're actively making a, uh, an effort towards that, um, which is what I think a lot of the companies actually need to start doing now. They actually, and I, I, I spoke because, uh, you know, we're in the same circle. I see a lot of my friends who run internet companies as well making the same conscious effort. So I, I think there's a real change happening also because uh, the gender, the, there's like this new sect of people that have come through that are making a conscious effort. To, oddly enough, when I spoke at this woman conference, the only thing that I saw was um, I actually had a lot of the guys email me saying, you did such a phenomenal job, which is really weird. It should be females, and they did. But 
you can tell there's an awakening when the guys are emailing you telling you what you said is absolutely true. We need to be doing this for all the women out there. This is genius. I think we've kind of, you know, we're waking up to this or we're at the chasm point and we will definitely cross it. That's pretty much it.